This little segment uh, is going to concentrate on uh, types of data. Now, we use numbers um, very heavily in this course. We're going to be using them uh, all the time. And it allows us to use the computer. Of course, we want to use the computer because the computer is, is fabulous in, in terms of doing all the hard work, like the arithmetic, the computing, the, um, the uh, storage. It recalls everything perfectly well. Graphics, it does everything. Uh, computers don't make the mistakes. We make the mistakes. And uh, we, therefore, like to use the computer. Now, numbers are, have wonderful properties. And sometimes we don't need all the properties uh, every time. So, uh, for example, one kind of data uh, is what we call nominal data. Now, nominal data, for, let me just give you an example. So, nominal data might be, um, for example, when uh, we label males as zero, females as one. Uh, that's nominal. Um, another example is if we use zero to denote who's alive and one for denoting people who are dead. So here, note, um, it's nominally a number, so just zero, one. The only property we're making of this number system here is that zero is different from one. That's the only property we're making. Uh, we're not saying one is is bigger than zero. We're not saying that one is one unit away from zero, etc. So this is the simplest example we have of nominal data. In fact, this is sometimes called um, binary data or dichotomous data. Depending upon whether you prefer the, the Greek or the Latin uh, root for two. Uh, but it doesn't just have to have two values. For example, if we're looking at uh, blood groups, here we, we would need four values. So here we go. If we denote blood group A by a 1, B by a 2, etc., then uh, it's just the fact that these are different. That's it. Okay? It's not that B is bigger than A and AB is bigger than B or anything like that. We're just using the fact that they are different. Now, uh, if you go to FHS.DTA, the data set from the Framingham Heart Study that um, Lauren uh, spoke to you about, then you can take a look and see how many uh, nominal data there are in that uh, data set. So in summary, nominally, these are nominally numbers. Only in name are they numbers. There's no order. The magnitude is unimportant. So that's nominal data. Now, as we go up the ladder of uh, complexity and, and properties of uh, data, the next one up is ordinal data. And now what we want is the order to be important. So here we might uh, classify some disease as, as mild, moderate, or severe. So instead of mild, we give it a 1. Instead of moderate, we give it a 2. And instead of severe, we give it a 3. Now, here we're using the order, the order of the data. That's why it's called ordinal data. We use the order of the data because 2 is a little bit more severe than 1, and 3 is a little bit more severe than 2. So the order is important, and this is called ordinal data. Here's another example. In the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, which is a clinical trials group in uh, cancer, um, they have come up with this uh, five-level uh, uh, classification of the performance status of, of an individual. And it ranges from zero, where the patient is fully active, to four, where the patient is uh, disabled. And there's a progressive, it, it, be, it progressively gets worse as you go down the scale. So here, the order is important. So this is a little bit more structured than we had with the nominal data. So in summary, the ordinal data, the order is important. 
but the magnitude is unimportant. We're not saying here that um, the, the distance from 1 to 2 is the same as the distance from 3 to 4. The magnitude is not important. Let me clean that up for you. So saying the magnitude from 0 to 1, we take one step, but from 2 to 3, we take one step also. The magnitude is not important. It's just that the order is important. So the order is important, and the magnitude is, is not important. Now, there's a special case of ordinal data that we use uh, repeatedly, and that is called rank data. Rank data is um, sort of like when we just had the Olympics, the person who finishes first gets the gold medal, the person who finishes second gets the silver. It doesn't matter how far behind the second is from the first, it's just that the second one finished second. So it could be a fraction of a, of a second uh, to finish second b uh, later than the first, or it could be uh, you know, a few minutes. It doesn't matter. It's just the rank, the rank in which the data are ordered. So here, for example, are the 10 leading causes of death in the US in uh, for 2010. And we look and see that rank one, or the highest, or the most deaths, in, in this classification system were due to what was classified as heart disease. Number two was cancer. Number three was uh, chronic lower respiratory disease and so on. The numbers, we use the numbers only to order the data. So this is called rank data and, and so what, we, what we're going to do sometimes is just work as if we had just uh, these data and forget the numbers, just work with the ranks. And it's amazing how much information just the ranks have and how useful this is. So this is rank data. Um, sometimes th uh, the number actually confuses matters. So for example, if we look at the 10 leading causes of death in 1993, then the numbers are not at the same base level because they were more people in 2000 than there were in 1993. Maybe there were more deaths in 1993. We don't know. But we, there are the 10 leading causes of death in 1993. And when we compare 1993 and 2010, we see that the first two have remained the same. Stroke and chronic lower respiratory diseases have switched place. This one has remained the same the unintentional injuries, and now all of a sudden in 1993 we had HIV infection in the top 10 and we had homicide and legal intervention in the top 10 and neither of them have made the top 10 in 2010. So presumably there's been some improvement um, in those two causes of death. But anyway, the point is we can't compare the numbers because the numbers are referred to different bases, different uh, group of people, but we can refer to the ranks and we can make a comparison uh, between the uh, causes of death, where they rank, and, um, and so on. Okay, so that's rank data, which is a special case of ordinal data. The next level up is discrete data, sometimes called integer data or count data, because that's what it is. Discrete data is really, um, well, in mathematics we say it, it, you can put it into one-to-one -one correspondence with, with the integers, and um, it's basically counting. So, for example, here are the number of deaths in, in millions in the world. So this we get from the WHO, and we see there were 7.2 million deaths from uh, ischemic heart disease, and... 5.7 million from cerebrovascular uh, disease and so on. So this panel here in the top right, hand, top left hand corner, this panel up here gives us the world. Now what they did at the WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, um, they broke up, they classified each country into one of three uh, groups. Either the low income group, that's this, this one up here, or the middle income group, that's this one here, or the high income group, and that's this one here. And they base that on the average income per person 
in the country. So if that's less than $825, then that country is classified as a low-income country. And if it's more than $10,066, that's classified as a high-income country. And in between those two would be the middle-income countries. And you can see that as we change in, uh, in terms of richness, then the uh, causes of uh, death as far as the numbers of people are concerned um, change. If we worried about the size, we can standardize this and just look at the percent. So this column here, this last column here, gives us the percent. And then it makes, it, it makes sense to compare the uh, different um, countries. And we're, we're now, this is something we'll talk about uh, later, namely standardization. Now we, the comparisons make more sense because we are dividing by the population size. So we won't have the population size to be uh, concerned about. Now we can look at these numbers and this one here, the top left-hand corner, the world, is actually an average of the other three, and we'll talk about averages soon. And what the average uh, tells us is, in some sense, should be the arithmetic average of these three panels. But it's not that, and it's a little bit more subtle than that, and it's actually a weighted average, but we'll get to that uh, later. But from this, you can see that, for example, that the, the number one over here, ischemic heart disease, is only, it's not a one here, and it's not a one here, it's number two here, but it's a one here. So somehow, what's happening in the high-income countries uh, influences uh, what happens in, um, as the overall, um, for the world average. So averages are, are fascinating uh, things to deal with. And uh, we'll, we'll attack that shortly. The last category is uh, continuous data. And this is what we always think of as numbers. We think of um, between any two bounds, for example, any value is theoretically achievable. So for example, if you think of time, time is, is one that we typically think we can measure to any accuracy we want. And that sort of that makes it a uh, continuous or length or mass or temperature, etc. All of these are examples of continuous data. Now, we can get philosophical here and argue that all measurements, and that's what we're really interested in, is what can we measure? And all measurements are really discrete. All measurements are really discrete. But there's an advantage to modeling them as continuous. And especially if we're going to use digital computers, which we do and will, etc., digital computers, as the name implies, only handle discrete numbers. It doesn't handle uh, continuous numbers, although they modeled uh, as, as continuous numbers. But, but really, there's only a finite number of numbers in a computer, and there's the largest number. We can talk about the largest number. We can talk about the smallest number, etc. Okay, so uh, in summary, um, we, these are the kinds of data that uh, we looked at. So this is our taxonomy. It's basically into four groups, nominal data, ordinal data, discrete data, and continuous data. And the reason why we go into this much detail is because we are going to use different statistical methods when we have nominal data, than we do when we have ordinal data, than we do when we have discrete data, and then we do when we have continuous data.